Hello everybody. Welcome to the major exam series IGNU PhD entrance model questions. These questions are going to help you with a lot of exams. So please make sure you get the PDF from the group. We will cover a lot of important questions if you look up these questions and study a little bit. This will tremendously help you. Join me everyone and uh, we will do all these questions that are taken from subaltern studies, diaspora studies. Fox studies and many important areas. Are you ready? The subaltern studies group is also called SSG. The subaltern studies group or SSG is a group of Dash scholars. The subaltern studies or SSG is a group of Dash scholars. You know Ranajit Guha, Deepesh Chakrabarti, Partha Chatterjee, Gyanendra Pandey, Gyan Prakash. Don't you know? They are the important subaltern studies specialists. Gayatri Spivak. They are very important South Asian scholars, isn't it? They are important South Asian scholars. Ta -da -da. <clears throat> Will you remember everyone? Next question ready? Very good. Subaltern studies focus more on what happens among the dash in society. Subaltern studies is about The dash people, is it erudite people, the masses, the elite people or all of the above? Remember guys to look up all these terms and everything that I am talking about. Subaltern studies focuses more on the masses of course. The ordinary people, the subaltern people are the ordinary people. The peasants, the working classes, the people who are uh, not the powerful people. The ordinary people. Will you remember? The masses. Okay. Ranajit Guha used the term subaltern to refer exclusively to Dash. You might know guys that the term subaltern came from the military and it was originally employed in theory by Antonio Gramsci. Antonio Gramsci. Ranajit Guha used the term subaltern to refer exclusively to which of these categories of people? They the subaltern studies group, Ranajit Guha, etc. talked about peasant uprisings. Yes, Ranajit, Ranajit Guha talked about the peasants of India. Remember guys, um, in India, history did not include the peasants. History did not include the peasants. Their history nobody wrote. So, Ranajit Guha took upon himself the project of Indian historiography to write from the point of view of the subaltern. He wanted to write from the point of view of the subaltern. Subaltern studies emerged around 1982 as a series of journal articles. Which of these publishers published these journal articles? Subaltern studies emerged around 1982 
as a series of articles published by is it Cambridge University Press, Routledge, Harper Collins Publishers, or Oxford University Press? All these questions can be important in net and set also. They can ask these questions in net and set also because in net and set also subaltern studies is an important concept. Yes, many of you are telling me the correct answer. It is Oxford University Press. Subaltern studies emerged in around 1982, remember, in a series of journal articles, remember, published by Oxford University Press. The SSG's influence on academic research has dash, has been confined to certain parts of South Asia, has spread throughout South Asia, has spread throughout the entirety of Asia, has been felt worldwide. The SSG's influence on academic research has been confined to certain parts of South Asia or spread throughout Asia or spread throughout South Asia felt worldwide. Which of these is correct? Of course, SSG's influence has been felt worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, thank you very much, Vasanta. I'm glad my classes helped in TRB exam. Many people have been telling me that. Thank you so much. Actually, in every exam, our 10 p.m. live will be immensely useful. Please follow every day, okay? I'm sure it will be immensely useful. Remember, subaltern studies group influence is felt worldwide, everywhere. Subaltern studies and the politics of plays. Have you heard that book? Subaltern studies and the politics of plays is a work by definitely not Antonio Gramsci. Is it Ranajit Guha or Donald S. Moore? Is it Ranajit Guha or Donald S. Moore? Who wrote subaltern struggles and the politics of plays? It is Donald S. Moore. Donald S. Moore. Thank you guys. I am grateful to you also. Because you come and encourage me. Thank you guys. Subaltern st struggles and the politics of plays by Donald S. Moore. Very important. Please remember. Read extra also, guys. Remember to read extra. In her work, Feminist Theory, Embodiment and the Docile Agent. Saba, there is another Saba here. In her work, Feminist Theory, Embodiment and the Docile Agent. Saba Mahmood. Did you know Saba? Saba Mahmood. Questions, conventional notions of dash. Feminist theory, embodiment and the docile agent. Saba Mahmood questions conventional notions of resistance and agency. Agency means you can do things. You are capable of doing things. You are the doer. That is agency. Conventional notions of resistance and agency are questioned by Saba Mahmood. Remember, those who are writing net and set, remember, Saba Mahmood, very important theorist. She wrote feminist theory, embodiment and the docile agent. Okay, then school girl speech is a term related to the research conducted by school girl speech. Is a term related to subaltern studies and research conducted by it will not be Gyanendra Pandey. Is it Saba? It is Miyako Inui. Will you please remember to look up these writers, everyone? I know that sometimes you may not 
know all these questions but that's okay remember to look it up miyako inui wrote books related to school girl speech subaltern studies can be called a dash discipline is it pre colonial colonial or post colonial subaltern studies can be called a dash discipline bolo kya hai is it pre colonial colonial or post colonial or none of these of course it is post colonial post colonial did you understand uh, you know after um, colonialism left india what are the indians doing are they giving representation to the subaltern people that is the thing miyako inue somebody is asking what is the nationality she is american she is a very important anthropologist and theorist in america miyako inue in the previous question this is an american professor then subaltern studies is post colonial dekho sumit sarkar criticized subaltern studies recent subaltern studies was criticized by sumit sarkar in decline of the subaltern in subaltern studies you know which turn in subaltern studies is criticized is it marxist turn or foucauldian turn or both or none of these sumit sarkar criticized the foucauldian turn i will explain guys at first the subaltern studies had a marxist turn they employed marxist ideology subaltern studies group at first employed marxist ideology and laid the foundations of marxist approach in subaltern studies but then suddenly they gave it up and turned to foucault sumit sarkar is criticizing criticizing them for turning away from the marxists for giving up their marxist agenda sumit sarkar is criticizing them Criti sumit sarkar is criticizing the subaltern studies group for giving up their marxist agenda and turning to foucault will you remember guys actually the other day when i taught you subaltern studies a little bit i had Uh, talked to you about it which among the following is usually now we'll talk about multiculturalism are you ready which among the following is usually avoided in multicultural literary works which among the following is usually avoided in multicultural literary works is it female perspectives regional cultures stereotypes or authenticity which of these is usually avoided i'm fine rahila guys can i tell you something will you please share the video link in your groups so that people will know that good questions are being shared of course multicultural literary works did not use stereotypes saber and others please listen multiculturalism why should they avoid female no why would they avoid regional cultures no regional cultures all amount to multiculturalism why would they avoid authenticity no they avoided stere stereotypes stereotype is a negative thing the others are not negative things are you able to understand multiculturalism avoids stereotypes that's the obvious answer are you getting me guys this is negative stereotypes the others are not negative clear then which among the following is not true about multicultural literature it's about people who are marginalized which of the following is not true it is about people who are marginalized it stimulates an understanding of and respect for people from other cultures 
it describes how people live in different parts of the world it promotes ethnocentrism what do you mean by ethnocentrism ethnocentrism means focusing only on one culture giving centrality to only one culture that is called ethnocentrism does multicultural literature talk about marginalized people yes oh you can't read properly i'm so sorry guys now you can read listen everyone is multiculturalism about people who are marginalized yes of course it is it stimulates an understanding of and respect for people from other cultures yes other cultures are important in multiculturalism it describes how people live in different parts of the world yes but it promotes ethnocentrism is wrong ethnocentrism means about only one culture that is against multiculturalism Mult multiculturalism can be about marginalized people why would you say no multiculturalism can be about marginalized people you don't have to say this is wrong a is not wrong are you getting me guys it is not enough to get the answer you should get why this is the answer then you will benefit in exams isn't it yes which among the following has been described as a salad bowl a mosaic culture in contrast to melting pot which of these is salad bowl or mosaic culture is it multiculturalism cultural relativism symbolic culture cultural capital listen everybody what do you mean by salad bowl that means many cultures are coexisting salad bowl means many cultures are coexisting cultural mosaic means many cultures are coexisting is it multiculturalism is it cultural relativism is it symbolic culture or cultural capital of course it is multiculturalism multiculturalism is also called salad bowl or cultural mosaic in contrast to melting pot culture multiculturalism is called salad bowl or cultural mosaic then which culture and community is portrayed and explored in things fall apart by chinua achibe which culture and community is portrayed in things fall apart all of you know this this is easy it is of course igbo culture yoruba culture was discussed by wole soinka yoruba culture was discussed by wole soinka igbo culture discussed by chinua achibe all right uh, there is no one book for all these things do he i don't know bini i don't know any one book where you get everything i got it from many sources these questions came from many sources our research and development team also worked on it which novel published in 2003 narrating the story of amir shows how the afghans who arrived in the united states survived worked hard and maintained their cultural status in multiculturalism amir is the character dekho 2003 novel narrates the story of amir afghans in the united states how they survived who told the story of amir and hassan yesterday i told you na melting pot and salad bowl yesterday or day before i told you this is not difficult salad bowl means coexistence of different cultures like in canada melting pot means all cultures become like one culture like in america in america it is melting pot culture everybody becomes american they lose their cultural identity did you understand 
but in canada everybody retains their cultural identity yes story of amir and hassan is the kite runner kite runner did you understand everybody please don't miss classes okay this is a course if you join sometime occasionally then you can't do the course completely every 5 days it's a course so join every day don't take a break then if you take a break you won't be able to get continuity that is why also please inform your friends also right guys a kite runner is the story of amir and hassan thousand splendid sons is the story of laila and maryam laila and maryam then name the famous novel about jose arcadio buendia in which gabriel garcia marquez craftily blends culture with fantasy remember jose arcadio buendia is the character gabriel garcia marquez is blending culture with fantasy and presenting the uh, character jose arcadio buendia hena describing how the citizens of macondo struggle to hold on to traditions citizens of macondo struggle to hold on to traditions as the world changes around them it is 100 years of solitude somebody is asking me about chutnification chutnification means culture is fragmented like chutney but at the same time preserved through memories etc culture is fragmented but at the same time preserved culture is preserved in memories culture is preserved in uh, narratives did you understand preservation it is the same as pickling in 100 sorry god of small things paradise pickles in in god of small things same thing similar and agha shahid ali talked about biryani biryanization now which novel by lorraine hansberry is an intriguing look into african american culture it is not a novel sorry guys which play by i made a mistake which play by lorraine hansberry is an intriguing look into african american culture and the lives of black americans living under racial segregation in chicago oh rahila really yes lorraine hansberry is a raisin in the sun lorraine hansberry is a raisin in the sun is an intriguing look into Oh okay I will try that. Lorraine Hansberry uh, took an intriguing look into African American culture in a raisin in the sun. Here you have the story of the younger family. The family is called the younger family. They are all waiting for an insurance check. Their father uh died and the youngers are waiting for an insurance check. every one of the family members has a different plan for the money and finally they decide to go and live in a white neighborhood we they decide to go and live in a white neighborhood are you getting me guys they become strong enough to go and live in a white neighborhood which multicultural place where many people of many religions and cultures coexist is the setting of arunthadi roy's the god of small things arunthadi roy's the god of small things is set in which place where many religions and cultures coexist it is aimanam many cultures and religions coexist in aimanam okay which 2000 year novel by zaidi smith 
Zadie Smith wrote a 2000 year novel focusing on Britain's relationship with immigrants from the British Commonwealth. It is an excellent example of multiculturalism. 2000 year novel, Britain's relationship with immigrants, example of multiculturalism, several characters are presented. Four characters, I think. It is white teeth. Presenting a real picture of London. White teeth. Cry the Beloved Country, the novel by Alan Payton, published in 1948, details the multicultural background of Dash. Cry the Beloved Country is a novel by Alan Payton. It was published in 1948. It details the multicultural background of South Africa. Alan Payton is an early South African writer. Will you remember guys, very important South African writer who wrote Cry the Beloved Country. Okay, next question ready. Who among the following has made a morphological analysis of Russian folk tales? Now we are moving into folk tales and narratology. Who made a morphological analysis of Russian folk tales? To dissect the relations of its components with the whole. Who analyzed the relations of component parts of a tale to the whole? Will you please like the video everybody? Yes, it is Morphology of the Folk Tale by Vladimir Prop. Did you like the questions or you did not? Is it because you did not like it that you are not liking the video? You are thinking, Are, this is so bad. Not good questions. I don't like it. I hope you are not thinking like that. Now, who among the following is a pioneering folklorist of the United States? Very major folklorist. He is important in language also, linguistics also. He died in the arms of Claude Lévi-Strauss. Did you know that? He died in the arms of Claude Lévi-Strauss. Who was the pioneering American folklorist? Very important in language studies also. Very important in language studies. It is Franz Boas. Franz Boas. Pioneering American folklorist. We have a whole research and development team in TESS. All of us are making these questions together. We are thankful to all of them. I have also made some questions. They have also made. Now, who among the following is credited with coining the term folklore? Wow, did you know that? Who among the following is credited with coining the term folklore? I said that the other day. I think Jay's Joan, Ignu PhD entrance is going to be objective this time, they said. This time, Ignu PhD entrance is going to be objective, it seems. It is William Thoms. William Thoms. Okay. Which among the following is not true about folklore studies? Which among the following is not true about folklore studies? The content of folklore studies is often nationalist. Is it true? Systematic studies of folklore began from 18th century onwards. Folklore is almost always associated with ignorant masses. And the working class. Ignorant is a bad word. <laughs> so, folklore is almost always associated with the masses and the working class. Deco, folklore studies. 
the content of folklore studies is often nationalist. Correct. Systematic studies of folklore began from 18th century onwards. Correct. Folklore is almost always associated with the masses and working class. Correct. All the above are true. In IGNO, there is a, a course in folklore studies. Folklore studies is a course. Girish Karnad has explored folk motives. In which play among the following? Girish Karnad has explored folk motives. In which of these plays, Bolo? Is it Tugluk, Hayavadana, The Fire and the Rain or none of the above? It is Hayavadana. Hayavadana has folk elements. Uh, Nagamandala also has. Nagamandala also has. Select the wrong statement from among the following. They go eight minute me dikati. I know you can't read. Select the wrong statement. Okay. Folk life is always viewed in contrast to the elite who are seen as civilized and urban. Folk life is always viewed in contrast to the elite. Is it true or false? Folk culture is seen as a haven for anti-social activities and drug abuse. Sahi hai kya? Is it correct? Folk culture is seen as a haven for anti-social activities and drug abuse. Are wo to nahi hoga. Folk lores are deeply connected with the nation. Correct. Folklore is viewed in contrast to the elite is correct. A is not wrong. Only B is wrong. A is not wrong. Only B is wrong. Folklore is always in contrast to the elite because the elite are seen as civilized and urban. That is correct. Which among the following is one of the roles of folklore? Religious. Historical national, cross national, all of the above. Religious, historical national, cross national, all of the above. Bolo, which of these is one of the roles of folklore? Yes, it is all of the above. All these folklore has religious role, historical national role always. In periods of nationalism, folklore flourishes. Cross-cultural role is also there. All of the above. Then, folklore and folk life and introduction. is an important work on folklore studies by folklore and folk life and introduction. It is Richard Dawson. Folklore studies, Richard Dawson. Folklore and folk life and introduction. Okay. What among the following cannot be included under folklore culture? Folk culture. What among the following cannot be included? Crafts, can it be included? Drama, can it be included? Dance, can it be included? Medicine, can it be included? All of the above can be included. Folklore culture or folk culture can include crafts, drama, dance, medicine, all of the above. Will you remember guys? All are included in folk culture. Folk drama are mostly performed during. When is folk drama mostly performed? Is it weddings, festivals, death rituals? Is it weddings? Medicine also is folk culture. 
Medicine also is part of folk culture. Weddings, festivals, death rituals, both A and B. Yes, it is both A and B. Folk drama can be performed during both A and B. Now we will have diaspora criticism. Ready guys? Who defines diasporic literature as writing in search of homeland? Who defined diasporic literature as writing in search of homeland? Do you know? It is Mina Alexander. Writing in search of homeland is Mina Alexander. Who of the following features uh, do not make the theme of diaspora? Which of the following features do not make the theme of diaspora? Diasporic literature does not necessarily talk about is it nostalgia, memory, imaginary homeland, hybridity, new identity, globalization, cosmopolitanism, patriotism and love for own country. Which of these is the least possible in diasporic literature? It is patriotism. Diasporic literature does not talk about patriotism usually. Diasporic literature always talks about nostalgia, memory, imaginary homeland. Diasporic literature always talks about hybridity and new identity. Diasporic literature always talks about globalization and cosmopolitanism. Diasporic literature is literature written by diasporic people. Diaspora means, I already explained it two days ago. Where were you, Rahila? I taught all this now first. Only then I am giving questions. Two days ago, I taught all this in a lecture. Diasporic literature means literature of diasporic people. People who have scattered from their homeland, isn't it? And these are the features of diasporic literature. When people emigrate to other countries, and do not want to align themselves with their home country. They want rather to separate themselves from it. Listen again. When people emigrate to other countries. They do not want to align themselves with their home country. They would rather separate themselves from home country. Then identity becomes dash. Identity becomes Hyphenated identity. Oh, Rahila, no problem. I hyphenated identity means both are there, this and that. Will you remember? Both are there. Uh, hyphenated identity means home culture and immigrant culture, both are clashing. Will you understand? Now, who among the following is a writer of petroleum diaspora? What do you mean by petroleum diaspora? That means people who went to the Gulf to work in petroleum industry. People who went to the Gulf in uh, search of jobs in the petroleum in industry. Is it M.G. Vasanji? Is it Mohsin Hamid? Is it Hari Kunzru? Or is it Vilas Sarang? Is it M.G. Vasanji, Mohsin Hamid, Hari Kunzru or Vilas Sarang? Bolo guys. Yes everyone. Tell me who of the following uh, belong to petroleum diaspora. It is Vilas Sarang. Guys, you should know some of his important works. He is a very important writer. He has written books like Blasphemy. Shall I write here everyone for you? Blasphemy. A house without windows. Have you heard of these? No problem. You can hear now. Blasphemy. A house without windows. Will you remember? Oh, no, sorry. That is by Nadia Hashmi. Sorry, sorry. Blasphemy is correct. Sorry, guys. 
This is Tehmina Durani, na? Sorry, sorry, sorry. Vilas Sarang is different. Wait, I, I got confused. Uh, Vilas Sarang is different. Um, Vilas Sarang is uh, women in cages. Sorry, guys, I got a little confused. Vilas Sarang is women in cages. Yes. The Dhamma man. Sorry. Hmm. Women in cages, he wrote. Dhamma man, he wrote. Then um, one tree is there. What is it? Fair tree, something. But these two are very famous. Fair tree of the void, I think. No problem. Two are important. Okay, everybody. Sorry for mixing up. Now, Jhumpa Lahri. One, DSC prize for literature. For which work? Jumpa Lahri won the DSC Prize for Literature. Do you know all the works given here are by Jumpa Lahri. She wrote one novel. Unaccustomed Earth and Unaccustomed Earth and Unaccustomed Earth is short story collection. Lowland is the second novel after the namesake. The low land is the answer. Okay, remember, the low land is the answer. Jumpa Lahri. Jumpa Lahri is a very important novelist. Uh, Nilanjana Sudeshna Lahri. Hai na? She has written both short story collections and essays as well as novels. Jumpa Lahri's Interpreter of Maladies is uh, famous, as, as you know. Uh, Interpreter of Maladies is a debut collection of short stories. Namesake is a first novel. All of you know that it is also a movie. The Low Land is the next important novel. It won DSC Prize for Literature. She is talking about Indian immigrant experience. Indian immigrants in America. And then she wrote short story collection, Unaccustomed Earth. Nowadays, she writes in Italian. Nowadays, uh, Jumpa Lahri writes in Italian. Now, which Trinidadian and British novelist and journalist wrote works like Fireflies, The Chip Chip Gatherers, A Hot Country, all of which actually depict stories of failure. Which Trinidadian, Indo-Trinidadian British novelist wrote these works, Bolo guys. It is. He is related to another Indian, uh, Indian Caribbean writer. He is related to V.S. Nepal. He is the younger brother of V.S. Nepal. This is Shiva Nepal. Shiva Nepal. Brother of V.S. Nepal. Will you remember? M.G. Vasanji's short story collection, Uhuru Street. This is easy to remember. Uhuru Street is inspired by which book? M.G. Vasanji has written a short story collection. It was inspired by V.S. Nepal's Miguel Street. People living around a street. That is the theme. Will you remember everybody? Yes. Which writer has used the pseudonym Joseph Anton and published his memoir? Joseph Anton for Joseph Conrad and Anton Chekhov. Joseph Anton was a pseudonym that he used while he was in exile. Yes. All of you know this one. It is Salman Rushdie. Salman Rushdie used the pseudonym Joseph Anton. And published his memoir under that name. Hena, have you heard of Amy Tan, Bone Setter's Daughter? Amy Tan wrote Bone Setter's Daughter. And Amy Tan is from which diaspora? Tell me. Amy Tan is from, from which diaspora? Amy Tan is from the Chinese diaspora. Will you remember, guys? Amy Tan is from the Chinese diaspora. Thank you so much. That is right. 
then guys are you loving the questions did you like the questions will you please like the video if you haven't already guys a very important book is which book mohsin hamid's the reluctant fundamentalist mohsin hamid wrote the reluctant fundamentalist haven't you heard the reluctant fundamentalist is an important novel by the pakistani uh, diasporic writer american writer and it has the protagonist changez khan he is a pakistani from lahore chasing his dreams in wall street will you remember changez khan is a pakistani from lahore chasing his dreams in wall street and he is now watching the twin towers falling on 911 the twin towers are falling and he is talking about uh his life to an american changez khan is talking about uh, his life to an american do you know which of the following is true about Fund, reluctant fundamentalist the protagonist changez is a terrorist changez feels betrayed by america in the aftermath of 911 changez is happy to be in america changez is horrified by the 911 attack and its aftermath will you will you tell me note all of the above he is feels betrayed by america you can't say horrified because changez says he is pleased by 911 changez actually tells the american that he is remarkably pleased by 911 and he feels betrayed by america he is not a terrorist and he leaves america at the end okay no d is not the answer he even says that um, he has a privileged position in the society he is not abused in any way and he is amused and he, he even says he is pleased so correct answer is he feels betrayed by america which of the following is an indian partition novel is it balachandra rajan's dark dancer amita trasi is the color of our sky arunthadi roy's walking with the comrades triti umrigers the space between us bolo which of these is an indian partition novel Do you know, guys? It is Balachandra Rajan's The Dark Dancer. Balachandra Rajan's The Dark Dancer is a famous partition novel. The book Diaspora Criticism is a guide to the discipline by who wrote Diaspora Criticism. William Safran wrote Diaspora in Modern Societies That is his book What did Robin Cohen write do you know Robin Cohen It is okay Rahila It will it will change you just take care of yourself don't worry Robin Cohen has written many many important books Global Diasporas is very famous Robin Cohen's Global Diasporas is very famous 
diaspora criticism is by Sidney Perkovitz and Sudesh Mishra. Sudesh Mishra is also a poet, Fijian poet. Sidney Perkovitz and Sudesh Mishra wrote diaspora criticism. Sudesh Mishra is also a poet. Will you remember everyone? Which of the following is true about Avatar Bra's cartographies of the diaspora? Avatar Bra is a very important uh, theorist. She has written cartographies of the diaspora. It shows that culture, politics and identity are highly contested terms. Avatar Bra's cartographies of the diaspora shows that Culture, politics and identity are highly contested terms. No problem, Rahila. Just relax and feel happy. You will be able to sleep. It is correct. Ye to correct hai. Uh, so, no, everybody. Avatar Bra says that culture, politics and identity are contested terms. The book explores the intersections of race, gender, class. Correct. That is also correct. It explores the emergence of Asian as a racialized category. Correct. All of these. Correct. Will you remember? These are all correct about cartographies of diaspora. Rahila, nothing is there, Rahila. It's okay. This is a public group and... You don't have to tell them you are ill or anything. You are not uh, that bad. You are going to be okay, Raila. Thing like that. Which of the following is not a work by the Indo-Canadian writer Uma Parmeshwaran? Uma Parmeshwaran is a, an Indo-Canadian writer. Which of the following is not a work by Uma Parmeshwaran? What was always hers? The sweet smell of mother's milk wet bodice. A cycle of the moon. Mangoes on the maple tree. All of these are by Uma Parameshwaran. Will you please read extra guys? Will you please read extra? All of these are. Okay. Uh, Uma Parameshwaran wrote what was always hers. The sweet smell of mother's wet, milk wet bodice. A cycle of the moon, mangoes on the maple tree. Many of these show diasporic experiences. The rigidly orthodox Khoja family who preside over acres of ill-kept sugar cane and hordes of jewellery are represented in the novel. The rigidly orthodox Khoja family who presides over acres of ill-kept sugar cane and hordes of jewellery are represented in the novel. It is Fireflies by Shiva Nepal. Fireflies. Will you please read extra everybody? Look at all these books. They are all very important. Fireflies by Shiva Nepal. Book of Secrets by M.G. Vasanji. The Black Hill by Mamang, De Mamang Dai. The House on Mango Street by Sandra Cisneros. They are all important. Will you read extra? Very good. Koja family. The Last Queen by Chitra Banerjee Divakaruni is the story of Is it Rani Lakshmi Bai, Rani Chennama, Rani Jindan and, or Razia Sultana? Ra Last Queen by Chitra Banerjee Divakarani is the story of Rani Jindan. Last Queen of Ranjit Singh. Now, who of the following wrote a famous novel centered on Salim Juma in exile from Tanzania? Who opens up a gunny sack bequeathed to him by a beloved great aunt? Bolo, the novel is called Gunny Sack. So, do you remember? Do you know? The novel is called Gunny Sack. Who wrote it, Bolo? 
famous novel centered on Salim Juma exiled from Tanzania who opens up a gunny sack it is M G Vasanji's novel the gunny sack M G Vasanji's novel the gunny sack is often prescribed in universities all right guys then which of these novels presents the story of nuruddin lalani and his family they are asian immigrants from africa they have come to the toronto suburb of don mills and are disillusioned by the promise of a good future nuruddin lalani he gets wrongly implicated in a crime they are asian immigrants from africa they are disillusioned in mg vasanji's no new land it is mg vasanji's no new land who among the following was written has written a short story narrated by kersey boys who describes his life in canada as well as connects with his past and parents living in bombay he describes his life in canada he also connects with his past and parents living in bombay which is the short story who wrote it bombay hai to rohinton mystery the famous story swimming lessons swimming lessons is the last story in tales from firosha bag Tales from Feroz Shah Bagh is a short story collection by Rohinton Mystery, है ना? Very famous. It is prescribed in universities. Then Moses Aliota is a character who recurs in the novels of Dash. Moses Aliota appears repeatedly in the novels of is it Sham Selvadure, Sam Selvan, Michael Ondaatje, or Shiva Nepal? Alia I made these questions based on previous questions of PhD entrants It is Sam Selvan Sam Selvan's The Lonely Londoners Lonely Londoners Moses ascending Moses migrating it is all there in our material actually this these things in our classes moses ascending moses migrating all these are by sham selvadure sorry sam selvan sam selvan okay we have come to the end of the questions will you read extra all these questions all these authors then you will be great scholars you it is just a matter of time don't worry All right guys so this is the end of today's session i will come back tomorrow with another quiz be ready another session will be there tomorrow be ready bye bye guys love you all god bless you i hope you liked the session you liked the video okay bye